illegal, you know. You might be wondering why the Minecraft building tricks I'm about to show you are illegal. Well, to make these, we're employing some cheaty building techniques and weird, obscure block states. But don't worry, they're seriously cool, and best of all, there is no mods, no data packs, and no custom textures. To make these, you'll need to turn off block updates. Axiom is the way to go here. I'd also recommend getting your hands on a debug stick. And without further ado, let's begin. The bottom block of the sunflower is incredibly useful. They can be stacked on top of each other to create these big, tall rows of plants, and you can even put all different sorts of saplings, plants, and flowers on top of them. These could be rows of corn, tall spindly vines, or something else entirely. Taking a piece of glow lichen and toggling all of its directional states to false creates this really cool like glow lichen cube sort of thing. They almost look like leaves, which means you could make some very weird like spectral ghost trees out of them. If you've got some sort of roof and supporting pillar and you want to make them connect up real nice, extend one side of the fence and add a lever and now you've got a really neat diagonal support. Maybe your spooky ghost tree needs some spooky dead plants and flowers. Try putting down a coral fan and a dead bush underneath. As you probably know, beds are two blocks long, which means that with block updates off, we can break half of them, and the other half still remains. You could use this to make some really neat couch cushions, like so, or you could just use one and make a cushy chair. Now I know vertical slabs are a bit of a meme in the building community, and rightfully so because I don't think they'll ever be officially added. But using some illegal tricks, we can come pretty close. Take a wall and put it like so, get out your debug stick, toggle on the north face of the wall, turn off the upside, and it doesn't quite work when viewed from the front, but when viewed from the side, that my friends is basically a vertical slab. Remember how we were just talking about all the really cool practical uses for sunflower stems? Well, they're not the only block in the game that has a stem like this. Oh no no no. Big drip leaf and small drip leaf both have a lower block here, which can be removed. You can use these in some magnificent hanging garden designs, or these very strange looking alien tendril kind of things. I don't know, they're kind of creepy looking. A cherry sapling underneath some cherry leaves underneath some pink petals makes a very cool little kind of pink house plant. You can also do the same thing with a potted cherry sapling if you want it to be a tiny bit smaller, or a potted azalea if you want slightly less pink and more of that vibrant light green color to come through. So, uh, you remember the glow lichen leaves? Well, uh, there's another block in the game that acts very similarly to glow lichen. That's right, you can make some very creepy, like, corrupted trees using skulk leaves. Lightning rods are already a very useful block, but with the debug stick in hand, you can actually set them to be permanently powered, which means they turn completely white. I love this trick so much, and I've used it in quite a few builds. It's a neat little bit of decor and a good alternative to an end rod that doesn't emit any light of its own. Using the different block states of glass panes, we can create some really cool shapes. I think they look especially cool as icicles. By taking a piece of floating scaffolding and messing around with the block states, we can create a scaffolding cube. And when combined with a base, a couple fish, and a top, you can get yourself an illegal fish tank. Big shoutouts to Blocker Locker for providing the last two tips. Minecart rails can be angled if you get the block state just right. This can look great as like part of a plow on some sort of farm equipment, or you could use them in some sort of like steampunk machinery as like a pulley or a conveyor belt of some kind. You can really go nuts with these. I'm gonna be using this in a future build. These are cool. Every single kind of stair in the game can be messed around with and changed to one of its many different block states. You could turn them upside down, make them into slabs, or tack on a bunch of these corners wherever you want. Seriously, this makes building with stairs so much easier. Using the no AI and BT data option, you can summon in completely motionless mobs that can still have a lead attached to them. 
And if you get creative with your mob placement, you can make some really cool decorations like these clotheslines with signs and banners hanging from them. I think this looks super, super cool. Ignore the egg at the top. That's uh, that's not part of the build. <laughs> I've enclosed the chickens inside glass here, which means that they're not going to suffocate, but they're pretty hard to notice unless you're specifically looking for them. One of my favorite things to do with this is to make tents that are actually staked into the ground. The top half of all the two tall plants like the lilac, sunflower, rosebush, peony, pitcher plant, tall fern, and tall grass can basically be a whole other flower in itself. I mean, look at this. You take out the bottom half and you still have a kind of neat little flower going on here. This is a whole other little like magenta flower bush in of itself. You got a smaller sunflower, chunkier ferns, and shorter grass. And speaking of the two tall flowers, the bottom halves are just as useful because you can make these really cute floral, almost like living tables with all these different designs. If you're making a footpath through a snowy biome and you just don't have enough white blocks to get the job done, take your debug stick and start right clicking the grass to literally just turn it all snowy. It's got this really neat desaturated gray texture, very similar to gravel, light gray concrete powder, and clay. I think you can make some really interesting block palettes with this. Now let me ask you this, have you ever had a pillar and a bunch of candles that you wanted to hang on the side of the pillar but you never really had a good way of attaching those two? I mean a fence is just so big and bulky. Instead, take a lever, go underneath like so, and bam, you've got a much smaller, much more lightweight candle holder. Isn't this so cute? So let's say you've got a bar or a tavern, but you don't want these big bulky seats that take up an entire block. Take some enchanting tables. Yes, I know what I said, bear with me. Bury them in the ground like so. Take three armor stands, place them on top. Hang three leather caps on top of the armor stands. And using pistons, push the slabs into place like so. You've now got these really cool looking player sized seats right next to your bar table. Using the debug stick, we can take a slab, set the type to double, and then waterlog it for what's essentially a full solid block that still has water particles dripping out of the bottom. As you probably know, dripstone comes in many shapes and sizes depending on how tall you stack it. By toggling off block updates, we can actually take advantage of this to make some very cursed dripstone formations. I especially like the dripstone lamp. It's really stupid. <laughs> We can use the illegal block states of glass panes to make some very weird and wacky looking chandeliers like the ones in the interior of this castle. Using a pillar of walls like so, we can change the block state of the various individual wall segments to make some very cool looking shapes. If done properly, you can take some floating twisting vines, put a soul lantern underneath, and then set the state of hanging to be true to look like the vine is dangling a lantern underneath it. This works for all different kinds of vines and all different kinds of lanterns. I just think it looks really cool with the twisting vine and the soul lantern. Using the debug stick, we can permanently set a pressure plate to be in the powered state, which means that you can walk right over them without them making any clicking noise. It's surprisingly useful. If you're a cheaty builder like me, then levers are your best friend. Check this out. They say you can't do real diagonals in Minecraft, but I disagree. If I position a bunch of levers just right, I can make these awesome looking diagonal beams. They actually look pretty decent. I know they've got little gaps in the middle, but just, just, just don't look at it. And it actually looks really cool and like very surreal for Minecraft. Basically every builder knows that walls and fences don't really play nice with each other. Unless you're willing to resort to illegal tactics. In which case, you can do some black magic like this. It's honestly not a bad wall design at all. Normally pink petals can only be placed on blocks like grass and dirt. But without block updates, you could place them pretty much anywhere. You could even place them on top of each other, if you wanted to for some weird reason. Same goes for banners, just put them anywhere you want. It doesn't matter if they're like attached to something or not, just, just go nuts with them. Go ahead and make entire curtains out of them, why not? 
using a pod, putting a bell on top, using a debug stick to change the state of the bell to attachment ceiling in order to create this very nice flush seam between the two, and then throwing a candle on top, you create a very funny looking, very large, extravagant candle holder. If this game just doesn't have enough mushrooms for you, throw down a pitcher plant, break the bottom half, cover it up, and you've got yourself a cool little alien blue mushroom. Going back to bells real quick, if you put a bunch of them down in a line like so, change the attachment state to double wall, you create this very cool little like balance beam of all the interconnected bells sharing one kind of wood piece running along the top. I'm not sure what purpose this serves, but it's kind of neat. A furnace, blast furnace, or smoker can be set to be infinitely lit. This is actually incredibly useful for like steampunk builds where you need to have a roaring engine or some sort of power generator that's constantly running and never runs out of fuel. Not only does the bottom face of scaffolding make for a good fish tank, but it can also make for some very cool like small windows because of all the surrounding pixels, it's slightly smaller than a full block inside there. I'm using it on the exterior of this like sample build here to create these cute little tiny uh, portholes almost. Oh, and uh, check out those vertical slabs, not too shabby. Any different kind of fence gate can actually be lowered slightly. What is going on there? Oh, that doesn't look right. <laughs> Using the in-wall state, you can just kind of push them down by a little bit. It's very strange. Something is seriously wrong with that fence gate. I gotta fix that. I actually used this trick in this earlier little example build over here. Once again, ignore the egg. It's to make these fence gates slightly lower down on the block so they would align with the sign here. By placing down some bamboo, growing it, and then chopping off the topmost blocks, and adding a mangrove propagule to the top, you can create these really beautiful, like, tall, swampy reeds of some kind. I think these look super, super awesome, and I wish they were actually in the game. Now, I didn't know this for the longest time. Hello, piggies. Skull catalysts actually have a bloom state, which creates this awesome effect on top of the block. Like, look how cool that is. Excuse me. What I'm thinking is that you get a... Uh, uh, hello? What I'm thinking is that you get a whole bunch of them, and you've got this really trippy looking, like, dance floor or surreal floor of some kind. Like, look at this. This is awesome. If it's a little bit overwhelming, you can always turn off every other skull catalyst. And in some ways, this pattern actually lets the effect shine more. Like, look at this. I could stare at this for hours. If you want the look of a full composter, but you don't want that bone meal texture on the top, you can just do that. And you can sit in it too. <laughs> Ew. We can use the textures of the planted wheat, potato, carrot, and beetroot seeds to make these awesome little small tiny variations in an otherwise plain grassy field. This is seriously like one of my favorite things in this entire video. I'm gonna be using this in future projects. Look at all these different varieties of grass. Such a cute little feature and I'm really surprised I've never seen anyone do this before. Placing a sweetberry bush on top of a honeycomb makes a really cute little pineapple. I guess it's not exactly little if it's quite literally taller than me, but uh, whatever. Redstone ore can be permanently set to be lit all the time. You may not think this is quite useful on its own, but when placed underneath blocks like carpet, it creates a really cool glowing particle effect. You could use this to highlight a certain section of a floor that you want your player to stand on. With block updates turned off, we can do some incredibly cursed things, like this. Feels weird, doesn't it? I could see this being very useful as like an axle underneath a vehicle though, or maybe as a very like industrial mechanical looking table design. This would be fantastic in some sort of workshop or factory. Using pink glaze terracotta and pink petals, we can create some really nice flowery floral patterns on the ground. You gotta admit, this is incredibly pretty and would be a really nice touch to a garden. Using pitcher pods, we can create these neat little bulbous plants of different sizes. Here's age zero, age one, age two, age three, and age four. And they don't even need to go on farmland. Without block updates, you can just put them anywhere you want. It's kind of a neat little uh, something poking up out of the ground. Age number one in particular really looks like a turnip. 
Similarly, we can take torch flower seeds and put them on the ground like so for a really cool little bluish green small plant. The color is very similar to that of the sweetberry bush, but just slightly lighter and bluer. With the debug stick, we can take a barrel and permanently set the open state to be true, and now we just have a hole in the barrel that's constantly there. Similarly, we can create some very cursed chests. <laughs> Remember the angled rails from before? Stack them on top of each other for a really neat, like, art installation? Or maybe a weird scaffolding of some kind? I'm not quite sure what this is, but it's cool. Take some nether warts and an observer to give this little dude a funny haircut. And last but not least, take the empty monster spawner illegal block and attach it to some chains and a grindstone like so to make some sort of metal cage or trap that's being transported via crane. These two textures go surprisingly well together. And you could do a whole lot more with the brand new trial spawner. And that's all the illegal Minecraft build hacks I've got for you today. Like the video if you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.